All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another uh, edition of the Swing State uh, Discussions for 2020. And today we're talking about Iowa. And if we were to go back to, say, 2014, or sorry, to, say, 2012, 2008, and so forth, uh, mostly and so forth, um, what we see is very much a swing state, an actual swing state. However, it's becoming very likely that Iowa is just trending more and more towards the GOP. And part of this is the bases of the party are slightly realigning. For example, working class whites are voting very Republican nowadays. Um, however, they tend to only turn out in presidential election years uh, for the most part, whereas a traditional Republican base of college-educated whites and conservatives, as well as evangelical Christians, tend to turn out in every election, but college-educated whites are moving towards the Democratic Party for a lot of reasons. Part of it is because a lot of them are not appreciative of uh, the conservative lean of the Republican Party these days for a lot of reasons. Part of it may be the college education system here in the United States, and part of it is potentially because they are buying into the Democratic rhetoric that the Republican Party is against uh, gay rights um, and is anti-minority, which... Eh, I don't really see that, of course, and again, I tend to be a third-party voter, so it's neither here nor there for me, um, <laughs> but as a commentator, I feel it is important to make the note that there is nothing inherently racist or homophobic about conservatism, at least in the ways I view, at least in what I view as conservatism, which is uh, the adherence to traditional values of hard work. Um, honest work, small government, that sort of thing. Now, there is a level of cultural conservatism that can be viewed as that, but I tend to separate the ideas of conservatism from those radical ideals of cultural traditionalism. Um, and radical cultural traditionalism. Now, of course, as we can see, Iowa tends to, uh, these are, uh, the, this doesn't tell you the margins, but uh, Dubuque, Iowa is up here. Cedar Rapids, if I remember correctly, is down here. Um, I know Des Moines is somewhere in this area trying to remember which county exactly is Des Moines. But as you can see, um, Iowa has only a handful of large population centers and most of the most of the state is uh, fairly rural and that actually is includes the population of the state being mostly rural. Um, I know the currently the only Republican in their house seat is up in this quarter of the state and every other district is uh, controlled by Democrats but there's been some interesting polling showing that the GOP could take all four house seats in Iowa. I am skeptical that I think the most they're going to get is three um, and also before I continue I should talk about the special elections that happened in California and Wisconsin. Uh, in Wisconsin, the result has been called and the Republican there has won. And in California, it looks like the Republican Garcia is going to win in California's 25th congressional district. Uh, though there's still three days for mail-in ballots that have been postmarked by uh, yesterday to get in and then be counted. Um I know there's going to be a lot of people who say that if uh, Smith pulls, the Democratic candidate Smith pulls this one out in uh, the special election, that there's, uh, 
probably been some sort of massive fraud because the lead in uh, that Garcia has is about 12% last time I checked. And that's a lot of mail-in votes, and that would arise a lot of suspicion, I would suspect. Most media outlets have not called the race, but it's it's not looking good for Smith, and Garcia is probably going to win that seat, but I wouldn't be shocked if something similar to uh, the Washington gubernatorial election, I think in 2010, happens, where it looks like the Republican is leading, and then all of a sudden a bunch of votes are found for the Democratic candidate um, a few days after the election that had been postmarked by the official deadline, and then counted, and then added on, and look at that, the Democrat took the lead, so... I don't think that's going to happen here, but I would expect a lot. But if it does, I expect a lot of uh, Republicans to start screaming voter fraud. Um, could happen. I doubt the result of the election will flip. But it could. Um, but yeah, so Iowa also has a Senate race with incumbent Joni Ernst. She is more than likely going to win her re-election campaign, and I really don't see Biden carrying Iowa in November. Um, it is a very swingy state, as in it has a lot of swing voters, so it has a high elasticity, but the state has been trending towards a Republican similar to Ohio, which we'll talk to later, and also sim similar to Wisconsin, which we'll also talk about later. And that seems to be a trend across the Rust Belt and Upper Midwest. And it seems to have been proven in 2016, as well as some of the seats in that area being held by Republicans in a Democratic wave year. Um, or making the races more competitive than they should have been in a Democratic wave year. Um, but anyway, I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Take it easy. Have a nice day.